In this video, we're going to learn how to diagnose three common issues using ClickHouse's inbuilt monitoring dashboard. Now, if you're running this yourself, so you're hosting a ClickHouse server, you'll need to make sure you have a file like this metric log YAML, which will make sure that you have the metric log and a synchronous metric log system tables. That file then needs to go under Etsy ClickHouse server config D metric log dot YAML. This is already there on ClickHouse Cloud. So if you're running on ClickHouse Cloud, there's no need to do anything. And I'm gonna be running on ClickHouse Cloud. And you can see I've got my marks demo service here. If we click through to the connect page, you can see these are the details for me to connect to my service. Now to connect to the advanced dashboard, we could use that default user that we've got there, but it's probably better for us to create ourselves a dashboard user. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna connect using the ClickHouse client. Let's paste in the host name. The user's gonna be default and we'll put in our password. And then we're gonna create ourselves a dashboard user. Don't worry, I'll have deleted this one by the time you see this video. We're then gonna create ourselves a role called dashboard. We'll assign that to the dashboard user. And then we're gonna give it some permissions. So it's gonna be able to query the metric log, the synchronous metric log, and the dashboards tables. Once we've done that, let's create ourselves a dummy table called test unbatched. It's gonna have two columns, call one and call two, and we're gonna order by call one. If we come back to ClickHouse Cloud, let's click on monitoring, and then under service health, if we scroll down, you can see there are actually some built-in dashboards here, but if we keep going, we get to advanced dashboards, and we can click on that native advanced dashboard link. And you can see this is the advanced dashboard. So let's log in as our dashboard user. We'll put in our password and now you can see the advanced dashboard. Let's go back to the terminal and we're gonna kick off a workload. Now in this workload, we're gonna insert data in batches of various sizes and see how we can detect potentially small batches from the dashboard. So we're gonna run this script here. We're gonna set a batch size of 10,000. So 10,000 inserts per batch. And we're gonna run it for three minutes. If we come back to the advanced dashboard, let's just change the number of seconds that we're gonna see for each dashboard to 1000 seconds. Notice that we're rounding every 60 seconds. So that means we'll basically get one value averaged over a minute interval. Okay, now the two metrics that we're gonna be looking at here are inserted rows per second and then max parts for partition. So each time we have a batch of records being created in ClickHouse, it's gonna create a part. And then in the background, it's gonna be merging those parts, trying to get it down to one, uh, basically. And so we can see the inserted rows per second are going up and the max parts per for partition are also going up. So that's kind of, that's pretty fine. That's kind of what we'd expect. And then as soon as we stop inserting the data, the max parts for partition comes down again. Let's try changing the batch size for our script to 10. So we're going to have only 10 records per batch instead of 10,000. And this time you can see the inserted rows per second is much lower, but the max parts for partition is still, is still going up. And then as soon as the data stops inserting, the max parts for partition come back down again. And so this might, like if you were running this over a long period of time and you saw, hey, why are the number of part max parts so high, even though I'm not really inserting any data, this might be an indication that you need to go and have a look at the batch size. Let's have a look at our second issue. So this is detecting resource intensive queries. So I've got a script here the, and it's gonna run a bunch of queries. So it's gonna be some light queries and some intensive queries. And the, in, the light query is gonna take like two, three milliseconds to run and the intensive one's gonna be take say two, 300 milliseconds. So it's not gonna be super slow, but it's definitely not gonna be fast. And we're gonna run with no intensive queries at all for three minutes. And then we're gonna run with 20% intensive queries for three minutes. If we then come back to the dashboard, now what we wanna look at this time is CPU usage. So you can see for the first few minutes, so this is remember when there's no intensive queries at all. So these are all very, very fast queries. It's staying very, very low. It's barely using the CPU at all. As those three minutes run out, you see it starts to climb up. So we're now onto the second uh, batch of queries and that's got some intensive queries mixed in. We see the CPU usage goes up. So if you see the CPU usage going up where the queries per second hasn't really changed that much, it could be that there are some maybe ad hoc intensive queries running or maybe some, for some reason one of your queries has got slower and you need to go and investigate that. And now for our third issue. So this is primary key design or ordering key design. So remember that our data set is sorted by call one. So we're gonna see what happens when we query by call one. And then we're gonna see what happens when we query by call two. So we're gonna have this infinite loop here, 
running the query select count star from test unbatched where col one is greater than one. So if we then come back to the dashboard, what we need to look at this time is selected bytes per second. So this is how much data is kind of being processed in order to answer the query. And you can see for this query is really, really low, right? It's almost hovering around like really, really close to zero. Let's come back and we'll change it to filter by column two instead. And remember column two is not how this data is sorted. So it's having to scan through everything in order to answer this query. And you can see the selected bytes per second goes right up. Now this is maybe not a bad thing. Like if most of your queries are on column one, maybe it's okay if you see it that, that when people search query by column two, it's going up uh, on that selected bytes chart. But if you see that happening a lot, maybe you need to have a look at the sorting key and, and figure out a, a way to avoid uh, <laughs> this issue from happening. And so that's the end of this video. If you want to learn more about ClickHouse, take a look at our playlist up here where we've got loads of different videos for you to enjoy.